Okay, good morning everyone. Firstly, I want to say welcome to our online viewers watching uh, by YouTube or DVD or whatever it is. We um, thank you that you've been able to join us and hope that you get something out of this as well. And um, I want to say firstly how much of a privilege it is to um, be speaking to you today and also to have been here at the Billabong for the last 18 months. It's been such a enjoyable time for me, especially these last six months where I've been on placement here with Mark. It's been a blast and I'm just really enjoying it. And I, so I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today and to, um, to share this time together. Um, usually it's not the wisest thing though for somebody to get up and preach uh, for the first time at a particular church on the topic that I'm going to preach on to you today. Um, it's not one of the nice messages that will make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside and go away all smiley. Um, it's the, ouch, that really hurt kind of message. Um, but it will be fun as well because we have superheroes in a telephone box. So um, I really hope that it does not only challenge you but also really encourage you towards a better way of living today. Um, this is something that God has seriously put on my heart and has really been speaking to me about a lot um, and there is quite simply no other thing that affects us more and tries to steal our heart more than this issue money giving that's what i want to talk to you about today now generosity as we were talking about last week in home groups is so vitally important for us as christians that if we compromise in this area, we must seriously ask ourselves whether we love God with all our heart, mind and strength. And my prayer is that by the end of the service today, you'll be convinced of that through God's word. Not through my words, because I know some of you might already be thinking, Luke, you're 24, you don't have a mortgage and four kids and schooling fees and all that kind of thing. And so I'm not going to try and convince you with my words. I just pray that God will because if he speaks to us and we respond to him, it might just change our lives. Um, so let's pray that God would speak to us through his word and then we'll have some fun, eh? Father, I pray that this morning in this time that you would challenge us, that you would move us, that you would confront us so that we might love and serve you to the best of our ability in this one area. I pray that you would open our hearts and our ears to hear from you. I pray that you would speak through these imperfect lips and through your word by your spirit, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Lord, our Redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I think it's really important that we start with some foundational and motivational thoughts for this topic because um, this is supposed to be the happy message. This is supposed to be so full of joy and life. Um, the scriptures all through them um, talk about giving as such a positive, positive thing. Um, some points are going to go up on the screen. Firstly, God loves a cheerful giver. That's from 2 Corinthians. Um, I've once heard somebody explain this is when you go over to the offering box when you put your offering in you literally laugh out loud like that's what a cheerful giver is like um, God himself number two is the ultimate giver and so when we give we reflect God's nature Acts the words of Jesus in Acts say it is more blessed to give than to receive Paul says joy joy results in giving and of course, number five, there are endless possibilities all through the Bible and in your own experience, I'm sure, of how giving benefits others. A few more thoughts on the next slide that I feel like God's been showing me just quickly. Generosity is at the center of our love for God. Generosity is one of the key answers to turning around the decline of the church. The generosity of Christians is so, so often at the center of people coming to know Christ. How often have you heard of somebody who became a Christian because of the generous lifestyle they saw in another Christian's life? Generosity 
brings justice all over the world and so many more things. All of these highlight how generosity is a fruit of the Spirit. That's what we are talking about last week, generosity, goodness. Generosity always produces good fruit. It produces blessings in the lives of other people and in our lives. But I believe today it's more than just a fruit or an act which produces fruit. I think that generosity is powerful, so powerful. Um, In a really challenging sermon that I heard recently, the preacher put it this way, and this will be on the screen, the power to give is the greatest superpower in the whole world. Let's say that together. The power to give is the greatest superpower in the whole world. And it's available to each one of us. Think about these statements. The power to give is access to one of the greatest attributes of God himself. The power of generosity gives you x-ray vision to see through the surface appearance of things in this world. The power of generosity gives you opportunity to go places and meet people and bless them in ways you'd never have been able to go before. The power to give is the ability to save lives, change lives, restore justice, change the world. Those are some big statements. Giving or generosity is beautiful, foundational, it's elementary, it's incredibly powerful. So, why is the church being disobedient to God and on the most part giving no more than the world who does not claim to know God? What makes me think that, you say? Many things, including how embarrassingly ungenerous I've been in my own life. But here's just a couple of things that have gripped me recently. Um, Not too long ago, I went to a youth rally, and the lady from World Vision there, who were one of the sponsors, she, um, she stood up to say what World Vision had been doing and how about 10 or so years ago, I think it was the year 2000, about 60,000 children per day were dying um, under, under the age of five from preventable causes. In about 10 years, that number had been halved, which is an incredible achievement, and now I think it's down to about 23,000. Um, and so that's, that's a great achievement. And so everyone gave a bit of a cheer, and I clapped for a second as well. And then I stopped, and I thought, hang on a sec. We've just cheered for the fact that 23,000 children under the age of five are dying every single day from causes that we could be preventing. We shouldn't be cheering at all. We should be on our knees. And I know you don't need me to to stand here and, and quote statistics at you about how rich we are and how the amount of ice cream we eat in a day could feed the whole world for a year and all that kind of thing. But the reality is that's just one example of how if the church was to become radically generous for a change, literally thousands of lives could be saved. But just as potent as our lack of response to the dying world's call to give is our lack of response to God's call and requirement to give back to him what was never ours in the first place. Everything we have, God has given us. You believe that, right? Everything we have, God has given us. But God doesn't ask for all of it back. We, I believe, have an ingenious principle. I think it's brilliant that God has laid out for us in the Bible, which means that no one has to be excluded from the gift and the power to give. What I'm talking about is the tithe, which simply means... Tenth, one tenth, ten percent. That's all it means. We don't use the word now, tithe, you know, like I'm going to put a tithe of a cup of sugar in the the batch. It just means a tenth. It's not a law to be shoved down people's throats, not at all. Neither is it a superseded idea because it's Old Testament. It's a biblical Old Testament, New Testament principle. God says the tithe belongs to me. And so firstly, for me, that means we don't give the tithe at all 
We just return it. Because God has said it is His in the first place. Secondly, it's never money that we just have left over that goes to God. Our tithe, our tenth. First, there we go, 10%. Our first 10%. I don't have time to unpack hundreds of Bible verses and explain it all to you. Mark said last week, um, test and research what the preacher is saying. And he said, especially for me, he thought I wouldn't listen to that, but I did. Um, so test this, do your own research. And Mark's going to um, talk about a, a little guide that we can give you that which the Billabong has used for years next week to put this into practice for yourself. But God asks for our first and our best. And not because he's big and mean and wants to spoil our fun. God wants this to be the greatest joy in our lives. So I want to illustrate something for you, um, or at least attempt to, because I don't know if this is going to work. I need somebody here to give me $100 cash. Anybody who's willing to do that? Beck. Okay, Beck, can you come up here? I didn't even know if this would work, but can you come up here, Beck? So do you actually have $100 cash on you? Oh my goodness, she has $100 cash on her. <laughs> Are you willing to give it to me? Because, you know, I've worked really hard on this sermon and they're not paying me a whole lot. So um, I would really appreciate it. Are you sure? You're not going to get it back? Thank you very much. Everyone give Becca a Becca hand. Now you're thinking, is Luke really going to take Beck's money? And the answer is, yes, I am. And it doesn't really impress me that much that she's been willing to give me $100 um, on the spot like that. Because what you didn't know is that I gave back that $100 before the service. <laughs> and you know what? It's the same with God. He gives us everything that we have. And when we give, we're just returning what he gave to us back to him. But here's the thing. Beck. Because you were willing to give all that I gave to you faithfully, I'm going to let you keep 90% of it. So that's $90. And that's for you to do with whatever you want, spending money for Cambodia or something like that. And I can tell you that that $90 is going to be a whole lot more special to Beck than if she decided to keep the 100 Do you see the point? God asks for our first 10% so that he can bless the rest. God is the bigger giver out of us and him. But this is where the rubber hits the road. Because when we refuse to return the tithe to God, it's not just, well, we aren't really being as generous as we could be. It's, we're disobeying God. We're not doing what God is asking of us. In the sermon that I mentioned a few minutes ago by a pastor that I listen to regularly, I was so challenged by a pastor whose heart was grieved that his congregation were being unfaithful to God in this area. He found through a financial report that 28%, only 28% of people in his church were giving anything at all. And only a third of those people were giving at a tithe level. So we're giving 10% or more. So in all, 90% of his congregation weren't giving at a tithe level. Um, in, here in WA, it's similar. I heard a statistic a while ago that in the Uniting Church in WA, uh, the average number of adults needed to support a full-time minister is 100 um, so whichever way you work the numbers, and by the way, ministers don't get paid 200 grand a year. <laughs> whichever way you work the numbers, it means we're not tithing. And let me get even more personal. The average attendance, excluding youth and children, um, was around 80 people here at the Billabong in a recent time period of, of I think, 6 or 12 months. And it's usually probably less than 80% of um, adults who can make it to any one celebration. So it would be safe to say that in this time period there were 100 regular um, adults um, in this time period. Based on offerings during this time 
and an assumption that all adults were receiving a minimum Australian minimum wage. Obviously, a few people receive less than that, and many people receive a lot more than that. But based on that assumption, if the only givers in the church were people who gave exactly 10%, then just over a third of people would have been giving. And it's probably safe to assume that most people give something, and so it's probably a lot less than a third giving at a tithe level. As low as one in ten, like this other church I was talking about, I'm not sure. And by the way, I did this same calculation with South Mandarin Uniting last week and their average giving was seven cents a week different to yours. <laughs> That's all. And so I said the same thing to them and don't think I'm just picking on you. Paul says in Second Corinthians 8, give in proportion to what you have. It would seem that we're not doing that. And I know there's questions that we have, such as, couldn't the tithe include what we give to other organisations um, as well as our local church? And that, quite honestly, is for you and God to work out. But I'm convinced that if we were really invested in the local church where God is at work, then our heart would be to return our 10%, our tithe or more to the church and give over and above somewhere else and I know that there's questions that you have such as well isn't tithing uh, couldn't it couldn't it be after tax and again that's for you and God to work out but I'm convinced that the principle of the tithe is that we give our first and our best to God and I know there's questions such as well isn't the tithing more of a law and shouldn't we just live under new covenant generosity and that's for you and God to work out but I'm convinced that because tithing predates the law, Abraham giving a tithe to Melchizedek, and Jesus accepted it as a principle, not a law, a principle, that it is a biblical principle that God calls you and me to abide, abide by. And we've seen that this is never, ever meant to be a burden. Never. In 2 Corinthians 8, Paul goes on to say, um, after giving proportion to what you have, of course, I don't mean that your giving should make life easy for others and hard for yourselves. I only mean there should be some equality. And that is something that the world and the church does not have right now. Right now, you have plenty and can help those who are in need. Later, they will have plenty and can share with you when you need it. In this way, things will be equal. As the scriptures say, those who gathered a lot had nothing left over and those who gathered only a little had enough. Do we have any excuses? But too often our questions become excuses, rationalizations, reasoning that we're not really disobeying God but we're just we're doing our best to be generous but I want to bring us back to the thought that generosity is not just a fruit giving is not even just a gift it is powerful the greatest superpower available to each and every one of us that we can use to change the world and our hearts Yet for many, as many as 9 out of 10 people in most churches, it's like they have defected from the kingdom of light over to the dark side. Taking the power that they have through the Holy Spirit and suppressing it so that personal gain is elevated above Christ and to generosity. And so... Just to illustrate this and to lighten the mood, I'm going to introduce you to 10 of my superhero friends over here who represent God's people, the church, the body of Christ, superheroes just like you and me who have turned their questions into excuses, thereby defecting to the dark side. So this here, and I'm pretty sure these will go up on the screen just so that you can see them better, is Captain Clencher. Captain Clencher has got his hands like that and he's like, it's my money. 
I earned this money. I worked hard for it with my hands and my feet, and I worked really hard. It's my money. I don't want to give it. The problem is, Captain Clencher, that God gave you your hands and your feet and your brain and everything you have to earn that money. And when your hands are clenched tight, God cannot fill them. God cannot fill closed hands. So that's Captain Clencher. Um, this one here is Broke Boy. Broke Boy is like, I don't really have that much. I only get $2 a day um, pocket money or $2 a week pocket money. And, and so it wouldn't really make much of a difference if I give. I'm Broke Boy. I'm, I don't have very much. I'm young and so I can't really give. So that's Broke Boy. Uh, this is Worry Woman. And now I'm not trying to be sexist here. You'll notice that eight out of nine of the superheroes are male. We just wanted to get some gender equality. Um, so n n it's not only females who worry. But worry woman is like, well, if we did give, then uh, what would happen if we had something big come up, an accident that we needed the money for, and um, I'm, I'm really worried that something might happen, and so she's looking over her shoulder, worrying, and that's worry woman. Um, I don't have time to stand them up because they don't have very good feet on them. Uh, Captain, now which one's Captain When then? That's Captain When then. Captain When then is like, business is bad this quarter, but we're going to come roaring back, and when that happens, then I'm going to be one of your biggest givers. The problem is with Captain When then that when never seems to end, and then never comes. Um, and so it's not really any use being Captain When then. Uh, this one is the mighty time is money man. The mighty time is money man is like, I don't give my money, but I give my time instead. Um, in the words of another preacher, that is so dumb. And let me um, illustrate why that is. If your wife you suspect is cheating on you, and you approach her and say, darling, are you cheating on me with another man? And she says, yes, I am cheating on you with another man. But it's okay, because I'm going to do some additional housework to make up for it. And so you don't have to worry. If that was the case, you would probably say to your wife, no, it doesn't work that way. I'm not looking for extra time or housework. I'm looking for relational faithfulness. And this is a big point. God is not looking for your money. He doesn't need your money or your time for that matter. God is looking for relational faithfulness. And that is the point, really, of this whole sermon. Uh, okay, so this is the green skeptic with his hands tied behind his back. The green skeptic is like, but I don't know what the church is doing with my money. Um, I don't really trust them. Um, if you want to know what the church is doing with your money, your money, that's God's in the first place, just ask. This is a completely accountable church. You can arrange a meeting, I'm sure, with any one of the leadership teams, see financial reports. So all you have to do is ask. Okay? No point being the green skeptic. Um, this is Sergeant Surplus. He's got his shields up. Sergeant Surplus is like, I give them my money, but they don't look like they need it. They have these fancy morning teas and they have somewhere to meet and all this sound gear and pianos and things and a minister, so I don't think they need my money. You're missing the point, Sergeant Surplus. You don't need, God doesn't need your money. The church doesn't even need your money. And, and some of you are thinking right now, actually, the church does need your money. That is not the point here. The church does not need your money. We have a bigger God who has more money than you could ever have. But you need God's blessing. That's the point, Sergeant Surplus. So no point being Sergeant Surplus. Um, second last one is Sporadicus. I love Sporadicus. Sporadicus gives every now and then. So he's like, I'm going to give. No, I'm not. I'm going to give. No, I'm not. It's a good month. It's a bad month. I gave today. I forgot that the box was there today. So that's Sporadicus. He's dumb as well. And then... And then last but not least is the incredible good intention guy who has great intentions to give but never follows up on them. Paul says though, don't just have good intentions but let your eagerness be matched now by what you actually give. And so we look at the situation that we're in here and realize that maybe the reason that the church 
is struggling and the world is dying both physically and spiritually is that only one or two people in every ten are left with their hands open to God saying all I have you have given me and so with a grateful heart I am obeying you by returning the tithe first and sacrificially giving over and above what I can in Jesus name maybe as little as one in ten only a handful of people but I dare to dream today that God would bring us a day that those who have defected to the dark side so to speak would reclaim the power that they have by the Spirit of God to tithe and give in complete faithfulness to God. So what would it look like? What would that look like for us to see that day? Let me show you. I want our volunteers, our superheroes, to come up and we're going to show you what that might look like for all of us to give back to God what is so generously given to us. Superheroes, and we need Captain Clencher very first. That, that would be Bill. Okay, so if you want to line up at the back there, ready to get into the phone booth, Bill, you're first, so you can um, get into that telephone booth. Superheroes. Today is the day that you turn back to God and reclaim the power that God has given you to be generous, the power of generosity. You're going to go into that phone booth and you're going to come out with a cape on and a G on your chest because you are now a generous giver who belongs to God and will fly with Christ. That's for all those at Chrysalis at the moment watching online. So, yep, you can get out now and you just come, come here. Okay, uh, I need those scriptures up on the screen. I wasn't going to show it. Captain Clencher, you are no longer Captain Clencher. You are Deuteronomo man because Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. <laughs> Broke boy. You are no longer, you can stand over there like a superhero. Broke boy, you are no longer broke boy. You are Filipino boy, or we'll just call you Flipper for short. And my, because it says, and my God will meet all your needs. How many of his needs? All. all your needs, according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Not according to some stock market or how the economy is going, but according to all your riches in Christ Jesus. Worry woman. You are no longer worry woman. You are Matthew 6, 38, 31 to 33 and Philippians 4, 6 to 7 woman. Or we'll just call it awesome woman for short. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we air? Where? Because the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. I'm going to let your own, put your own G on your chest. Captain when then? You are no longer Captain when then. You are the Hebrew of Hebrews. Because as has just been said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the mighty time is money man. You are the no longer the... Oh, we can do... We can do, the, we can do the other way around. That's fine. You are no longer the mighty time is money man. You are a marked man. Um, I, think that's, I think that's biblical, right? Um, <laughs> marked by the Holy Spirit. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all of your strength. Amen. The green skeptic. Oh. 
We forgot the order. That's okay. Is this good? <laughs> the green skeptic, you are no longer the green skeptic. Uh, you are the Corinthian, the green Corinthian. We'll go with that. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Always what? Always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. No longer the green skeptic, but someone who trusts. Sergeant Surplus, you are no longer Sergeant Surplus. You are Sergeant Malachi or Malachi. Because Malachi 3.10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And if you want me to go New Testament, New, New Testament Luke 6.38 says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Sergeant Malachi. And Sporadicus, you are no longer Sporadicus, you are Corinthianus. <laughs> Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that the labour that you do for the Lord is not in vain. And last but not least, incredible good intention guy, you are no longer the incredible good intention guy, you are the ecclesiastically incredibly good intention and following up on it guy because when you make a vow to God... Do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. Amen. It's time for us to rise up as a radically generous people who change the world. Let's give our superheroes another hand. You can sit down. So, <laughs> here's the challenge. And this comes from earlier in the 2 Corinthians 8 passage. It's a challenge to repent, which just means turn around from darkness to light. It's a challenge to begin to love God and his kingdom with all our hearts, minds and soul in this area. Since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love for or from us. I want you to excel also in this gracious act, this superpower that you have of giving. I am not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is. I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches but not just with the generosity of others oh no because also also with the generosity of God himself for you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ though he was rich yet for our sake for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty he could make you rich rich with eternal life, rich with peace that passes all understanding, rich with godly people all around you, rich with material possessions, rich with so, so much. And so in this very area, God would test how genuine our love is. We can't claim to love God and not obey him with the thing that most easily steals our heart. So it's time to repent, it's time to obey, and it's time to ask God for a change of heart and of mind so that we would truly believe that everything we have, everything we have, God has freely given to us and that the power to give is one of the most incredible gifts of unspeakable joy that the Spirit has clothed, clothed us with. So let's pray. Father, I pray that you would change our hearts this morning. That 
you would not only challenge us, but encourage us as well, that this area of our lives is something which should be and you have designed to be full of joy and anticipation and excitement that giving is one of the most amazing gifts and is so powerful in our lives and the lives of others and so with all our eyes closed and our heads bowed as we pray this morning I pray that if God's been challenging you in this area to either begin to tithe, return the 10% to him or to increase your giving somehow, I pray that you just raise your hand, not to me, but to God as a sign of saying, yes, God, that's me. You've been speaking to me this morning. For all those with their hands raised, I just pray, Lord, that you would bless them you would show them that this is something full of joy that you're calling them to step out in faith with. Father, I thank you for those willing to listen to your voice this morning. That what your word says is that we would just return what you have so generously given to us. I pray that you'd give us courage and strength to step out in faith in this way. In Jesus' name. Amen.